Welcome back to War Room Pandemic. I got to go through the stack of books and the radio audience. We keep a, always keep a stack here for us what we're currently reading. Uh, Stealth Wars. You don't have to actually go through um, unrestricted warfare. It's a little dense. But if you want to read the best analysis of it and how we got into the situation we have, it's General Robert Spaulding's Stealth War. It's a must read. How China took over while America's elite slept. Well, America's elite slept, but they slept with their hand open, okay, to make sure they got their, to make sure they got their, uh, their thirty pieces of silver. Yes, that is an analysis of uh, to Judas, right? Because they sold out the country, and uh, we're gonna have the pleasure of naming names over the next days, weeks, and months ahead of those that betrayed you, those that are still working for. Uh, and, I'm, and it breaks my heart. But is is Jones Day the law firm for the campaign? I Are they may, still? I think they might have gotten like a Jones Day, which did a great job on the campaign. Don McGahn, Steve Brogan, the senior partner, fabulous people. Love them. Don't love the fact that they're announced as Huawei's lobbyist because Huawei's lining up. They're, they're, the scam is they line up all these lobby firms. Between the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Chinese, they get everybody on the payroll. You know what, though? Hate on them all you want. I bet their Skype isn't cutting out. Whoa! <laughs> that's because you know why. The look that's because just... that's because they're on Zoom. Oh, uh, Zoom, which has a new member of the board of directors. Zoom, which is in Chinese intelligence. Zoom is getting all your data. Uh, uh, uh. Henry McMaster. Well, I'm Gen sorry, Vish. Gen I just I'm Gen sorry. Gen General just... McMaster. General McMaster's got to do that. Vish is so mad at me right <laughs> now. Just uh, the steam. Because he knows coming. where's my door. Where's well, my what, screen door? What really terrifies me about the Zoom thing is that so many people around the country are having these, you know, evening hangouts and happy hours, and and all installing this software into their computers, all installing TikTok onto their cell phones. Every little thing that these guys uh, accumulate from you, ladies and gentlemen. These companies brag about how they work in line with the CCP. When the CCP demands any data from all of these companies, they don't they don't protest like Apple protests the FBI in San Bernardino. It's not a demand. It's hey, it over. show us what the Americans are doing. Right? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Zoom, TikTok, all of it. Right? You got to watch it now. We're in Huawei, the worst. Let's bring in now General Robert Spawn, the single smartest guy outside of President Trump in the White House, right? General Robert Spaulding was a real warrior. You see Matt Pottinger and Navarro, all the great work they're doing. Spaulding was there, and Spaulding kind of left because of uh, because of 5G and Huawei. So we've had Freddie Graham from The Spectator. we got the British elite selling us out. we got the American elite selling us out. you now got the Commerce Department. Where, where is Wilbur? Wil Wilbur, he's sheltering in place down in Palm Beach. Right. Well, I got no problem with that. You're 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 at the back end of the greatest generation. Palm Beach not even open. Palm, Palm Beach, we sheltered in his mansion, right? But Wilbur, hey, stuff's happening to the Commerce Department. Might, can you zoom in? Get a get a zoom and hook in there. General Spaulding, help us out here. By the way, why is your former boss McMaster's on the board of of Zoom? Didn't he read your memo? You know, I um, I think people uh, in the government think that because Zoom is an American company, uh, then you don't have to worry about the uh, um, the fact that they have Chinese engineers basically doing all their code production. So um, there's a, there's you know it, there's something wrong with uh, with Zoom, and uh, and we need to dig a lot deeper to to get to the bottom of it. I, clearly, the fact that they were saying they had end to end encryption is the first one, but just the fact that they've got software engineers working in China on their code base does not give me any kind of comfort in, in that company whatsoever. Talk to us about Huawei. Why is the Commerce Department? I thought you put the stake in the dragon. I thought when Stealth Wars came out, all the cockroaches ran for it. When cockroaches ran for the, uh, no, I don't get 10% of this book because everybody says, Bannon, all you do is, is push Gertz's and Spalding's book. There's a must read. You want to have a must read? Read Stealth Wars. Uh, I thought after your book came out and you made your tour, everybody realized Huawei was the PLA. It's not associated with it. It is the PLA that this thing was over. What's what's happening to commerce? And you're telling me Spalding didn't actually drive the stake in the heart of the vampire? Well, so the, the vampire was given mouth to mouth by the likes of Qualcomm. So Qualcomm has been lobbying D.C. very heavily to be able to sell chips to Huawei. The other thing that they've been saying is, well, 5G is going to fail, 
and it's not going to have American design standards in it if we're not a part of the standards making body uh, in 3GPP. So they're basically lobbying to continue to sell chips to Huawei. And one of the things that they want to do is continue to be a part of this Chinese design network. The problem with 5G today is it's not just about Huawei. It's about the entire telecom ecosystem that has been pulled like a gravitational pull over to China because they dominated the system. And, and until we understand this and realize that we got to build our own networks that are secure, we're going to continue to have American companies lobby the Commerce Department to get these guys to allow them to be working with Huawei. That's the problem we face. They want to sell Snapdragon chips to China. That's what this is all about. Well, hang on for a second. I thought I didn't and correct me if I'm wrong here. I thought the White House had this and very smart strategic EOs, these executive orders that have taken decades actually to get through and finally pushed through by the Trump White House. They got the Chinese all out of our telecom system. Am I am I just some simpleton? I thought I saw a whole series three in a row that took care of this problem that quite frankly, it was once you were the beginning architect of this when you were at the White House. What happened to that? So Qualcomm is on the device side. So you're right. On the infrastructure side, yes, um, they have um, done a pretty good job of saying, okay, Huawei is not going to be building our infrastructure. What Qualcomm uh, is, is fighting for is the ability to have to be the device side of a Chinese design network. And so that's what they've been lobbying to do, and that's why they've lobbied the Commerce Department to get back into the standards-making body. You know, we should not be, the United States should not be participating in the design of a primarily Chinese-designed network. Talk to people, because one thing about being Chinese, another thing about being the PLA, and, and how close is Huawei to the People's Liberation Army? Well, it's really not about Huawei. It's about how the PLA does business. So today, if you're an American and you work for an AT&T, you might be an intelligence officer uh, on a part-time basis for the Army. So you're an Army reservist, say. So you work full-time at AT&T, and then you might spend a weekend, uh, one weekend a month uh, working for the Army as an intelligence officer. In China, the Communist Party does it differently. You work full time for the PLA, and then one week in a month, you might go and work for the telecom companies going out and updating base bands in the UK or providing software uh, updates to you know, the servers that are operating in another country. That, so they, they take a completely different view to how they mix business and military service. It becomes you're primarily military, but then you're coming in and assisting the business because, quite frankly, they see the telecom infrastructure as a means of collecting data and influencing populations, both for economic benefit, to sell more, you know, shoes, but also to get you to, uh, you know, appreciate the Chinese Communist Party model. General, this is Jason Miller. I've got a question for you. With all this money that's being spent in the phase one, phase two, phase three, and even the upcoming phase four uh, stimulus bill coming out of Capitol Hill, why is there not more money that's being put to 5G and in particular the U.S. development? I mean, we know that, uh, that we have a company with the chips in Qualcomm. Uh, we know that obviously from the American end, we can go and build the actual 100 to 110,000 towers that we're going to need, but we don't actually have uh, the uh, the chip relay system, so we're either reliant then on Nokia, Samsung, um, uh, Ericsson, or, or Huawei. Why aren't we taking some of the stimulus money and saying, damn it, we're just going to do it from the U.S.'s side? Well, so, so Steve can tell you what the problem is. What we have here is all of these guys from Wall Street that are really focused on uh, modern monetary theory that says, hey, if we just throw money into the banking system, you know, everything will, will, will uh, figure itself out. What's happening Every time we have a car crisis, we, we slam money into the banking system. And what happens is most of that money goes to China, and then they use it to buy infrastructure or to buy manufactured goods. So rather than investing it in our country in manufacturing and infrastructure, like we used to do in the Alexander Hamilton days, it's about industrial policy and, and growing our own economy and productivity, not about growing China's. But today, economists in the U.S., particularly those that are assigned to places like the Treasury and the Commerce Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission, just think you can throw money at the market and everything will sort itself out. 
the Chinese have hacked that system. So the money goes to them. We got about a minute left. Uh, General, you've been at the, in the super hawk camp for quite a while. The president and I say at the Resolute Desk yesterday said what happened with this virus was it was as bad or worse than Pearl Harbor in 9 11. What say you, sir? Oh, it's, I mean, clearly tens of thousands of Americans are dead as a result, as a direct result of actions that the Chinese Communist Party took. Now, look, when I was in Beijing, when the UUV was taken and, and negotiated the return of that, what I saw from Xi Jinping is he could exert direct control over the ship captain. He had re, essentially realigned command and control lines within the Chinese Communist Party and within the PLA. What that means is that when he says that he's in charge of Wuhan on 7th of January, he's in charge. So when you talk about letting those 5 million people leave Wuhan to four corners of the earth, without telling anybody and with tell, by telling WHO, don't say anything, and also by going from a net exporter of PPE and masks to a net importer, this entire thing, forget about the origin of the virus, the pandemic, the entire thing was orchestrated by Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party. General Robert Spaulding is the author of Stealth Wars. It's a must read. General Spaulding, thank you very much for coming on today and being as blunt as you normally are. Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an American patriot. That's somebody that the greatest generation have been proud to have in their ranks. Why don't you join his rank? Go to hashtag War Room Pandemic. We'll be back in just a moment.